Hello everyone, welcome to the next Chibcast. Today we're discussing Necromancy Society, and we're here with It's Ghost UK, and Hello. Seventh Outpost, yeah. and So High for Hentai. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> so a good, a good place to start would be the morality and philosophy of a Necromancy Society. So basically... The differences between a good necromancer society a neutral one and an evil one do you guys have any points you'd like to kick off with uh, how are we differentiating the morality of it like good evil basically neutral? i think it's all dependent on how they gather corpses so if they're you know routinely murdering people to get corpses that would obviously be an evil one but perhaps if they're only taking the naturally deceased then that would be either grey or perhaps even good if everyone's okay with it. Mm. Yeah, I think that if a necromantic society were to function properly, I think it would need to be able to somehow like sell to its populace that what's going on is either good or like desirable. Um, I think that it would be easier to run a quote-unquote good necromantic society or, or like one that uh, functions on the consent of the individuals and, you know, of the society involved. Because it is inevitable that a necromantic society is going to need a lot of people to breed and produce corpses. Yeah. And um, I think it's probably an easy sell to people once they can get past the kind of the ick factor of it, because, you know, if you've got undead working in mines, you've got undead soldiers, that kind of thing, it protects people. People aren't dying anymore. It's undead that they're getting hurt and killed and whatever. I mean, there's like a split between, you know what automation does and and that would be kind of like automation is like there will be pe people and potentially a lot of people who will lose jobs and they won't be able to find itself in this new society because necromantic society has everything outsourced everything well low uh low like skill labor outsourced to the undead which means that low skill individuals are going to be unnecessary in that society yeah that's actually really interesting what we can do is we can cover like the shift from a non-necromancer society to a necromancer society but also discussed one where that's already been established and there's no more transition and everyone's kind of on yeah. board with it what i was going to say is if we have necromancy in real life for example you can guarantee that uh, governments and companies would not get uh quote unquote good quality corpses from like western uh countries instead they would do what nestle does like nestle like if you've got one like nestle it would go to um a, a country that they could do whatever they want steal the corpses and then sell them back to the people or what or why would they sell them back to the people uh, they do this. They do this with water. It's like they'll they'll take like um, they'll illegally take water and then just like fucking nobody set. buys corpses though. Besides necromancers and necromancers are kind of like the highborn of the society. Like, I don't know. Find some cannibals. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, like, like I I know what you're talking about. Mm. I I think I think I can explain it in a way that would actually function for for the society. Um, I think what you mean is like like uh essentially kind of like a take over this kind of like like trade in a situation where it's not really uh where, where human corpse is not really that valuable in a yeah. way but that would be like that would be like or should I say that would be more like capitalistic where we can somehow uh have our um let's say society uh somehow connected across the globe where it's like in places where corpses are cheap and also in places where everything is is more expensive but that would be more capitalistic necromantic society uh than 
than you know a regular one i think so i think that the biggest issue if it comes to not just transition but also building such a society from the ground up is that you need a lot of people to produce a lot of corpses and you don't really have a lot of like space for them to fit in right because essentially you're like like you're essentially herding cattle like in in a way right because you need a lot of corpses or at least a steady supply of them right but why not buy them, why not buy them enough... cheaper from why not buy them cheaper from another country instead of uh, like well is is another country going to like like supply with corpses when they are when they aren't a necromantic society well money can Ooh, buy everything that's a good point mm. no no that's that's like that that is objectively not entirely true like getting a corpse in the middle ages was not an easy task uh, because it was a very strict taboo and very strictly forbidden so if you're building a society that that is culturally inclined to deal with corpses then you need to be self-sustained because right. everyone else around you is going to be to be angry at that i think for right. like an evil necromancy empire it would be very easy you'd just have constant wars going and that would be your source of corpses especially if you're powerful but, yeah. but okay but then then you end up just like rome and and yeah. you you overextend and you fall apart well that's yeah, what happens more to people. all empires yeah yeah and i I'm, I'm i'm trying to like figure out like how can we build a society that for necromancers where it's like it it actually works one that one can I've actually got. like sustain itself for more than you know a few decades right the one the one i've got the way that i want it to be like the way it'll hopefully be developed i say hopefully um is You've got un you've got undead that do that do menial tasks. This means that people will be able to go into other areas. This this liberty, this ability to do this, means the, that when like, they themselves where die, where would you put them? What will they do? Will they be like like artists or some shit? Like, I mean, honestly, that's it's a, that's a very question. That's a, it's a good it's well, a good question. That you can't have like, like millions of people being artists or doing like <laughs> like high high skill labor no no that is there's just there's just what i'm saying is like mm, um, you can't you don't have enough you don't really have the work to give to all these people seven. from whom it has been taken taken away why not well, why not why not have it more sort of bureaucratic so we have managers to look after the undead and we have managers to oversee those managers and then we have managers to see those managers well yeah but but it's still way way smaller amount of society than than you need to produce the corpses well, you also have to understand that, well, I mean, that that's kind of it to begin with, not to mention, like, a necromantic society won't really have that much of a population to begin with, considering that, for a lot of people, it's more like a morally compromising location. For them to have, like, all of them to be over there, it's like, they, they acknowledge it's a necrom necromantic place, if you're not, like, a magic god, you can have a hard time struggling here, and even, like, the more common folk, I think they can just kind of do that, like, you know, managing the undead in, like, those hard labor areas, because they... Are, like undead they have to be constantly told what they're doing in like a certain like manual labor uh, labor area so there will be people yeah. needed for that it definitely be like more like um a big economic boost in the industry of like you know uh, producing resources and materials but that's but it'll also be the same time like they will have a reduced population nonetheless it is a very heavily focused magic society that's that's what i'm saying is like it it, it how should I say, there's enough space for people to let's say produce enough uh sorry to 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 th there's not enough labor space for people to to like fill in the gaps to produce the corpses there's just not enough but the the way we can solve this uh is by creating a, a big uh like communist utopia scam is that it's basically like or already you know, we're going no, into no, communism no, no, literally just listen to me uh hear me out on this uh continue you basically comrade. tell people that they don't have to work and you have like what you have like a percentage of people who is like like um some kind of you know supervisors etc who, who are actually working on like maintaining this you know and, and and like having the undead be supervised 
and then uh, you basically invite people to come and live there in a place where, where they don't have to work, right? And you, you just feed them, etc. And you're like, okay, well, you get to work in luxury, uh, well, live in luxury for um, 10 years, and then we take your corpse. And it's like, I wonder how many people would be for that, you know? Because it's like, it's a not a long time. staying society, but you need the, the well, corpse. Well, uh, are you breaking up there? Uh who? -huh. We can hear you again, I think, but you you just went full robotic mode. Wait a minute, me or seventh? You. Ah oh, well, shit. <laughs> just repeat what you're gonna say because we missed it. Oh okay. Um, what I was gonna say is like um. Uh, from that psychological aspect, I don't think it'd work out that well because. Sure, people can be living it in luxury for ten years or so, but once they're like fully adult, once they're like uh, you know, um, which is probably people who could be joined there anyway, uh, those kind of people they probably will not be satisfied with that because people basically need to work, uh, or at least feel uh, self fulfilled yeah. every day more or less to sort of exploit, uh, uh, or else they'll just feel extremely depressed or try to find different things to do or like you know, like times exactly. they can just like pick up hobbies and try, uh, try to find pastimes, but other times. If there's literally nothing for them to do, they'll just, I don't know, I guess at a certain point, they'd probably just, like, pack their shit and leave. Yeah. Uh, you know what that's, I think could work? It's, like, very limited necromancy. Like, the, the necromancers are a small part of, like, a kind of normal society, and they just do the dangerous jobs, like, really dangerous mining or something. And for that, they can just use the standard, you know, just normal people dying. They don't need to do anything crazy to get a few corpses, that kind of work. Oh, I've... yeah. But then is the society yeah. necromantic, or is it just like Not a really. society with some? A, so a society where those in power can do necromancy. <clears throat> yeah, it's like. Well, yeah, then it's not. It doesn't really feel like a necromantic society. It just feels oh, like oh, like oh. society oh. with with specific necromancers, like yeah. society okay. with necromancers. Not okay, 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 okay. So what if you have it where? Fuck, I'm just thinking of like world building shit that I've got for my own shit now. <laughs> okay, so you've got it where medieval medieval setting, you've got monarchy in control, and they have all the power because, you know, they they've got money, they've got people that have swords and do what they say, so on and so forth. They've got incest and inbred, and inbred people and this and that and they've got this and they've got this. They've got all the all these things, but they've also got necromancy, right? So they've got that. What if they was to have it wherein Select individuals can say, like sycophants, people that uh, are, are of a higher. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, uh. Through through the power of nepotism, the great power of nepotism, they appoint select individuals to certain areas, and this could be that they have more sorts of, um, like they have necromancers in charge of this, 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 and this, or they have like people that do necromancy in charge of this, 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 and this. When it comes to the actual necromancy in the society part, they could very well have it, wherein you'll have like, oh yeah, it's the Duke, it's the Duke of such and such, or the or the so and so of such and such who runs all of these undead in this field, and he and he's in charge of this and this. Or you've got this woman who is able to talk to the spirits of this graveyard, and the spirits are able to impart their wisdom and do this and this, like. Yeah, but but again, like like you're not designing a necromantic society. You're just placing society, sorry, necromancers in a normal society and assuming that nobody, that everyone is gonna be like okay with them. Mm. You know, taking away, yeah. So it's like like assuming it's just gonna work and that no one's going to critique it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the same time, I also believe that like um, if they were to basically like come in some uh, sort of way, they also be like uh show that they're able to help and protect with the skeletons, because people are not usually welcoming new things, more or less only things that kind of benefit them. Like, if you kind of, like, go and think about, like, the... Uh, or, like, certain areas where it's, like, uh, the Crusades were kind of happening, or just, like, uh, on, uh, uh, constant fighting, the Paladins just kind of plant themselves and kind of help defend areas, and the people would just be kind of grateful to them and, get, you know, just let them stay there until, kind of like, uh, until they just kind of blends into their own religion. So the necromancers kind of have to do their own type of thing with that, where they basically have to go like show that they're able to help a defense. I've got an idea. You would need to essentially have necromancers in all the visible places of society in order to uh, call it a necromancer society. Acquainted, acquainted with it, kind of get like 
used to it in a way that would sort of allow them to accept it, even if it wouldn't be like, how should I say it, like meaningful economically. Like it, you wouldn't replace all menial workers with necromancers, but you would basically place them uh, on sort of a pedestal. Like they would be doing the, the tough jobs, but they would also be like the the priesthood in a way, right? So it's like, you know, we deal with death kind of like, like, um, kind of like doctors in, in some places. Uh, and the way, I, I would probably say that, that the places in which necromancers could be placed in such a like long-term sustainable society would be something like, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the army, obviously, mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, dangerous mm -hmm. jobs obviously but the issue is that like normally people don't usually see necromancers that often and if if uh, a group of people is associated with death and only like wages war then they will inevitably become some sort of i would say like a danger like they, they would or rather people would think that they are a danger because they don't really see them like you would need to permeate the whole society with necromancers and make it sort of like a pillar of the society, among other things. But the issue is, you can't. It would still be a society with necromancy, and not a necromancy that has a society. All right, I've got an idea. I mean. Me too. I forgot. What if we was to make up one right now? So how would it? How would we go about? It? Like, as in from scratch. So quickly, like design it. Not design everything, but the important areas. How would we go about it? Oh, hang on. I'd like to... Let's do the evil one first, because I think that's easiest. Basically, a violent necromantic yeah. takeover. Yeah. That's probably the simplest one to figure out. Yeah, so, yeah so that's basically like a necromancer cult. Yeah. Well, like, the, only like issue I see, the only issue I see with the evil one is trying to actually maintain it, because if you look at any kind of empire, any kind of, I guess, quote-unquote evil kind of... Um, society kingdom country whatever they it does eventually it does eventually it will eventually fail what about, the empires empires are doomed to fail based on what they will be founded on right about like slavery if, will be what yeah. about if the necromancers only keep animals and they only raise animals okay hmm. it'll be somewhat more not more sustainable but because like you can indeed farm animals like cattle you know that's that's let's yeah. say that's more dealable with um, um yeah question i mean you're pissed you're probably gonna piss off the guys who are like the master or, the, or like the beast tamer or something like that but other than that you'd be more or less decent why would you why would you raise an animal like like say for example that an animal's dead you're gonna want to take all the meat off it but the bones will also be very useful as well what is the benefits of raising it compared to grinding up the bones or using the bones for stuff? Because the only thing I can think of, the only, voice break, the only thing I can think of is raising the animal like a horse or a cow and using it as a beast of burden that will never tire. I got an answer. So in any necromancer society, the necromancers will be kind of few. So let's say yeah. you've got 50 necromancers in a castle and they've got like a shitload of animals. Well, they don't need to eat that much. They can. They have plenty of surplus animals to slaughter and raise as minions. Okay. I think they would probably need to breed some kind of animals that have like special abilities, such as like very large crabs or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, that would be able to, for example, do the hauling, right? And because it, it it it's like way easier to handle. It's just a robot. So it can do all kinds of things, um, but again, you, yeah, it's it's way easier if you have animals and animal corpses because it's much more sustainable to kind of raise them like you know cattle. Like you, it's easier to kind of like handle animals in large quantities and then uh, apply them to specific tasks, which would be like like like. Uh, serve one animal could serve as a serve as a quote-unquote forklift right so you have this giant crab 
that you just reanimate after it dies and it just you know picks big things up and carries them back and forth etc etc so you have like dozens of those and suddenly um you don't need that big population so i think i think cheb has it going i think cheb is is kind of right in this is that you can you would basically need like very spe specified animals but it it could work i think yeah and like if the necromancer society is especially evil they could also keep humans as like cattle yeah yeah like this um, kind of vampire style society yeah. when after the vampire dies yeah what if uh, depending on the fancy setting what if special monsters animals or creatures were to be created for the sole purpose of this yeah, that sounds say, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, 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 say, like small rodent-like things that can reproduce rapidly in uh, a small period of time. That, that's that's yeah. it. That your swarm has done. Say animals that yeah. can be perfect beasts of burden, or their meat is succulent and hardy, or so on and so forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. And also, so, like, you go seventh. Produ yeah, in that situation, producing chimeras and all the such things would be. Uh, advisable mm. because like suddenly you can make all kinds of things and it well the the point however would be that they would need to be able to breed and they would need to be able to breed rapidly so that you can get large quantities of them fast and then you know feed them etc etc and then you have all kinds of you know useful um abilities and such uh one other thing an interesting aspect i think about that as well is like the um if you're able to, like, mass breed, like, a lot of animals and stuff, uh, if your neck masters are, like, well-versed in their craft or or just, like, actually knowing what the hell they're able to do and what they can't do, uh, one of the uh, things they can also do is probably have, like, a good surplus of bone golems as well because if they're able to uh, reproduce fast in large quantities, it'll just let them, you know, have, a, like, a large supply to begin with, to begin with. If a minion breaks or anything like that, they could just probably take, like, all the leftover pieces and just make it into a new bone golem. Granted, the bones won't be exactly sure. the greatest, but it, it'd still be able to use them be multi-purpose after death. Like, uh, chimeras and undead constructs, I think, would be the better basis than humans for a necromantic society. So, like, you would basically have, like, a, like a portion of, uh, of, of animals just, like, serving as, as, you know, beasts of burden, etc., uh, or and, and the portion of, of animals would just be killed for like meat and whatever is left without the meat would be um used for for animation and and service and warfare etc one of the issues that those are like um to also like, like the interesting and cool animals for um oh, what's it called like getting chimeras and such would be interesting and definitely be useful at times, but it's also uh, it takes a lot of time to breed them. Not to mention, it might also be hard to get such animals to begin with in the first place. Like if you want to build like like a uh, game like ma uh, uh, magical uh, what's it called magical animals or anything like that. Like if you want to be, uh, be able to get their bones, and raise them up, and just kind of like uh, sorry, uh, get uh, get them, raise them up, and then you know, and when they die, just use their bones for something else. The problems with that is they're also like they're magical bees. They probably have like habitat specific kind of things. So after a certain point, it become part uh, necromantic society, but also part zookeeper. Mm, yeah. That's true. It would be a part a druidic, part necromancer society in a way. But like that is inevitable because either you like, either you somehow treat humans like cattle, but then they wouldn't probably breed. Is the the issue? So like you would need to. Um, make some sort of like organ organize something that would basically breed humans like cattle, and that's like that is way more difficult than than breeding animals, you know, and then yeah. just raising them and 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 making and making all kinds of weird things with just their corpses, you and know? also but like it, it constructs. If you think about the usefulness of an animal corpse compared to a human corpse, in a lot of cases, an animal corpse is a lot be better. They've got bigger bones, they're stronger. Like, why would you need human corpses exactly? exactly? Yeah. It was yeah. like if if, if, we're, if we're gonna be focusing on like the um, mass producing like uh, animal bones, we're definitely got to focus more on the uh, 
how do you say like the easier to mass produce and cheaper stuff like i don't know, like wolves rats those guys are able to like you're able to just kind of make them in mass and it's just like if you go and try to bring like magical beasts or anything core like that that's probably gonna have to be given to the nobles of the society because those things if if everyone has those things it's just become one half zookeeper one half a uh, necromantic because it's very hard to raise those things to begin with and it can even take way longer than the actual like end result is yeah I mean, I mean, well, that depends on like how um, how you're handling this and how difficult the chimeras are to produce. But um, maybe it could be like you produce a species and it can breed. So it's like you just have them breed for some time. So like a setup of a necromantic society like that is slow, but then it's, you know, it, it, it gets way, way, way more... Um, let's say, spread out in a way. It, it, it really gets more powerful all the time. But the big okay. only issue is that, as I, yeah, you're kind of right. Like, it would, you would need to essentially have, like, a part of society that takes care of the living things because you need the living things in order to produce the dead things. Like, that is oh, inevitable. Yeah, wouldn't that actually sustain, like, a good a, a chunk of the jobs for the society as well? Like, wouldn't that solve, like, our job problem? Yeah. Because we know for a fact undead cannot raise things. You can't do that. It, like, it's just like a society is going to become farmers now, which I think actually would help solve the uh, job costs or job problems. Yeah, that's if, a good point, I think. What, what do you mean they can't raise things? Um... He's... Um... It's, it's about... just kind of like skeletons in general. Like you have to take you have to take animals, mass uh, mass produce, and mass breed them uh, from birth, and basically like you know, like uh, help raise them all the way up. And animals might even th themselves can probably be scared of dead things. Uh, yeah, or is yeah, like anything that resembles that. But you you need only like one or two workers for an entire barn's worth of animals. You know, you don't need like dozens upon dozens of workers. Like every single. You know, worker is going to be able to, like, handle 20, 30, sometimes more animals. Yeah, so I think we've learned one thing. A necromancy society has to be small in all situations. I can't think of any necromancy society that can be giant. Do you guys yeah. agree? I mean, it, it yeah, can really see expand. It. it can expand. Uh, it just, it would just take a lot of time, a lot of sort of setup for it in this way so yeah because like you would need to okay you would need to set up animal pens and then you know you would need to breed the animals etc etc um but yeah that could theoretically be sustainable but like as i've said you would probably like your your society would rest more on the beasts and influx of dead matter from uh, the living pl places, parts, etc., rather than uh, on the living part. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just I think the, the 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 zookeeping part is the the most, I would say, unnecromantic. If you know what I mean, that's like, oh well. I want to set up a necromantic society, and I want just necromancers and like abominations and such. But it's like no, you need you need influx of dead matter. So or, or like either you're making a an empire that is bound to topple, or you're producing like living matter some other way. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. Is there, is there any way that you can have like a large human population in a necromancer society? I don't really think I you can. can't think of one besides uh, the situation where you would basically have like pseudo resort of some kind, right? And you would basically be like, okay, well. You know, you, you stay here at the cost of your corpse. So, like, elderly people come there and it's kind of like a retirement home. And mm -hmm. when they die, they their corpses are taken. But it wouldn't be, like... I don't think that would be very, like, valuable. Or you somehow, like, get good enough 
infrastructure to basically breed humans, right? Or, or like breed creatures of some kind uh, artificially, right? So like you would need like some kind of magical cloning chambers to to breed things what's more. about um, or what about the secret necromancer society that's like pulling the strings behind a real society because like think about this for a second you've got liches right they live for mm -hmm. thousands of years what is yeah. the the I'm life biased. of a human yeah it's like a blink of an eye so they don't need constant people like they can they can happily wait for people to just die of natural causes and they're, they're in the shadows nobody knows that they're there they've got some kind of like underground army maybe the they've but got you have like... to remember that like uh corpses inevitably decompose yeah. and the agents used to stop corpses from decomposing are also kind of um, most of them besides tar i would say uh like they 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 basically get used up over time so it's like it is inevitable that your corpses are going to uh decompose so it's it, it is not as sustainable as you think because hmm. i i know what we're getting at it's just like it's difficult to stop the k of corpses what do you think about like the idea in general of like um a secret necromancer society that's living inside a larger society i think it would be more uh sustainable i wouldn't say sustainable it would be more uh reasonable for to have something like a vampire a hidden vampire nobility than mm. a necromancy society because necromancy is very explicit like it's very graphic in a way you know anyone sees you raising a corpse and you're bust right or you you have to kill them right or but but with vampires they have all kinds of like like mind control magic they have thralls they have all like like levels um of of direct and indirect interaction with people and they can mask themselves much 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 better what about a setting where there's lots of illusion magic and the people don't realize that their guards are like skeletons because they've been cloaked in illusion magic? Um, it would be difficult to sustain, but like theoretically, yes, but like it would really not be that great because it's like, as I've said, it would be it would all rely on the fact that nobody like knows how to see through illusion that all of this is like perfectly hidden etc etc yeah. um yeah no I, well, I don't think it would be sustainable in a way that would allow you to build like a huge army you know, I was trying to say, with, with that you could possibly uh like possibly have like, a, an agreement with the higher ups but if that's something that's not like that, because people that see uh, people who can just, like see through illusion and such are not going to be like your most common day folk. But um, people who are like in definitely higher positions are probably going to be uh, they're probably going to be in on the know uh, in a, a situation like that. Like there could be just like an agreement of like the necromancers be, uh, being like a large help in like uh, in like certain areas in case of warfare happens like that. In the meantime, they'll just let them kind of do their own thing as long as it doesn't go past uh, past uh, the point of their agreements. Well, yep. yeah, but then you're relying on, like, everyone having the same morality of approving of this, right? And I, I don't think that's going to happen, because even in the real world, you get whistleblowers about the government, right? Like, like You get whistleblowers about all sorts, yeah. Which is, with, if our government, which is, like, way, way, way more obscure and hidden behind layers upon layers of bureaucracy, and... and you know, it, it's shadowy activities are way less explicit and more difficult to understand. Uh, if if they're having issues with that, then I think that medieval necromantic society, where where everything is even more like I would say simplified and explicit, um, yeah, no, I I don't think it would be it would be sustainable in the long run. There's also the risk of espionage, like someone sneaking yeah. in that knows that there's an illusion and then dispelling it and then mass hysteria. Yeah, yeah. I have another idea I want to ask yeah. you guys. 
What about uh, a necromancer society of like maybe say 50 to 100 necromancers that sits over a gold mine and all they do is they mine gold and they use this gold to purchase corpses from nations? Sounds like Australia. <laughs> Okay, okay, well, 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 you see, what we do is we take this corpse, and we have this corpse, he mines, he mines, he mines gold, and we take the gold, and, and we use it to buy more corpses, and with these corpses, we, we mine more gold, and you won't believe what we do with this gold. <laughs> but, but that's very simple, um, somebody just raids them, and, 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 and destroys them, because you, like, Assume. resources don't exist in a void, and nations don't exist in a void. And there's going to be somebody who's going to just like be like, oh, well, we want this gold and we don't want to sell corpses to these fools. And yeah, it's very well, easy to band a lot of people uh, around a certain goal if it's like common enemy and common gain. Yeah, like, and it would, sure. it would like really, really, really easy to band a bunch of people against uh, the necromancer society. Like, seriously. But, but, but I can this. You, sorry, you go first. Um, the whole fucking world banded against Vietnam, basically. And they were in technologically inferior. They still won. We learned that in our previous podcast... I didn't podcast, know the whole world that, is... Well, the, the whole Western world, basically. Oh, do you mean like like the anti-sort of war, anti-Vietnam war movement? Sort no, of no, thing? no, no. I mean like USA, Touch Australia, it. Britain, everyone else um, invaded <laughs> Vietnam, which is like a small country that had pretty limited help from china and russia and they mm. s they still won with guerrilla warfare and we've already established in previous podcasts that skeletons and undead in general are extremely good at guerrilla warfare so it seems it conceivable be, yeah. to me that like you could as a necromancer society repel such an invasion with with like guerrilla tactics basically and you'd just be yeah. like such a fawn on their side that they're like, okay, fucking hell, we'll give you the gold. It, it's also understand like again, like we're dealing with necromancers. They're pretty much like one of the most resilient people. And if you have a group of necromancers, they're infinitely much more fucky wucky. Considering that, like you know, if you kill their minion, they won't give two flying fucks. If they kill one of your men, that's a win for them because they literally yeah, gain, yeah. like gain, they lose nothing but gain everything from that. Isn't that isn't that sort of like the whole thing with with investment uh, investment and return? It, it's it's like uh, oh yeah, I've got one minion and it's good if he can kill at least more than one person before he dies, and then that's two more minions for me. Yeah, pretty much. And also, and, that's like having... if, and that's if he can't raise his dead dead minion. Yeah, and also guys, look at Switzerland, right? Like, it's basically its entire doctrine is we're going to be like incredibly fucking difficult to invade so don't even try it and they've survived <laughs> for hundreds of years like that yeah and then they do sit on a gold mine in a way yeah um that's true. Didn't, isn't that the same with um finland as well uh i think yeah a bit because i'm thinking of the winter war but the thing is with the winter war is that didn't stalin get rid of most of his generals so the military yes. was kind of ineffective at yeah, that time also, yes yeah. that's true yeah. Um, I was going to say, the thing with the gold mine and it getting raided, that could actually be how a necromancer society starts. Hmm. Like, it could it could be that it starts off as a simple business venture and then they need to get guards, so they get guards, then more people start coming because there's more job opportunities, and of course these undead need to be outfitted and people need to be fed, so people like sort of come there for, protect, uh, for protection and live their lives, and then even more people come. So then they need to get more corpses because there's more people to sort of do things with, and there's, and of course the raiders are getting bigger, so it just expands until it becomes like a big city or like a town. Yeah, I can see In that. In all honesty, I'm I'm not a very great scholar on let's say um, on on Vietnam, but I do know that. You know, in medieval times, there were situations where a country could be declared pagan, essentially, and everyone banded against them, and they got destroyed. Oh, okay. So, is it is it like with the Celtics and uh, the Romans? Among other things, yeah. yeah, it was basically like like situations where where a country was essentially declared heretic. I think by the Pope. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Mm. But um, like, long story short, they have. I, I mean, look at Napoleon, right? 
like yeah. Napoleon uh sure he 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 uh he went into Russia and then he had to retreat and as he retreated everyone banded against him yeah. and he got to like utterly smashed uh, yeah. of course that was after his his utter failure in Russia but to be know. To be fair to Napoleon, though, like you can see as to why he did it, He'd, he his military um, career has been pretty massively successful up until that point. Really, like he he'd done a lot of stuff until that point. It's it's taking Russia was more or less his dream, and it will it was a dream of him. It was hasn't multiple people in the past tried it? I can only think of yeah, Napoleon. Yeah. In the no, that's Germany, that's but... not not the point for necromancer society. The yeah, point no, for necromancer no. society is like all of, everyone banded against him, and they did basically destroy him. I got yeah. the answer to that. So, so basically, invading a necromancer society country, whatever, is very different to invading like a, a country of living people. They they don't have like the same needs. Like, you have to consider that the the undead don't need food they don't need sleep they don't need this and that and all these things make them pretty difficult to fight against you know you've got constant harassment in the soldiers camps from ghosts wailing all night keeping them awake and you've got like tireless you know assaults all the time you've got like the necromancers spreading plague and dysentery among the troops via magical means and then you've got like where the hell are the necromancers even they're like split up in tiny little cells all over the country and hidden in caves and like sure you can op occupy the whole country but you're going to be under constant assault from like spirits and like just all kinds of shit so instead of the tree speaking vietnamese we've got the graveyard speaking skeleton <laughs> yes yeah like, also there's one other thing you have to also remember is the fact that Remember, the, like, it's the Necromancer Society is uh, pretty much uh, like almost all undead. With you know, the Necromancer is ruling on top. They can also just make the like the uh, the rest of the world, uh, rest of their home, like a complete desolate wasteland, and just go like total Vietnam on everyone's ass. Problem is, even they don't have to turn off their own traps. They can just keep that shit on forever. Yeah. It's, well, I was just... sorry. Go on. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, what I was gonna say is, um, for mine, uh, for my world, when it comes to that. When it comes to that, there's a thing that um, the monarchy have going on, wherein they will entomb their kings with like um, armies and whatnot, and like soldiers or people like working for that king, and they will entomb them in, a, in like this massive crypt, and there'll be like dozens and dozens and dozens of these undead in there that will be looked after, and so on and so forth. Anyway, time passes and it's not looked after, so the so the uh, spirits inside get really pissed off and become independent. What we're not taking into account here when it comes to necromancer society is we're looking at like the aspect of like what the physical undead can do, but what about the spiritual undead? Because will the will the spirits like it that their bodies are being used in this way? Will this will they not care? What roles would they have in this society? Like because depending on when this starts, if you've got a thousand years worth of say undead spirits, so on and so forth. You can have multiple armies going against you, and you can have multiple countries going against you. But will that actually work? Because you've because they need to have they have living people that they have to feed, maintain, look after, train, educate, all of this stuff. Compared yeah. compared it's, it's, to a thousand that, that, years worth you're of assuming that only uh, that only necromancers have magic, in which case that is like that absolutely wins. Yeah, that's, a, that's like, a really good point, actually. What yeah. if they have some kind of like light that makes skeletons burn the moment they gaze on it, or they have some kind of like turn undead um, magic yeah. for priests? So it's like, I would that's absolutely true that like magic society versus normal society would potentially be wiped out, but. Um yeah like necromancer society versus all the magical societies i'm not so sure i'm not so sure that wouldn't be like uh there wouldn't be like alchemists with with uh fire bombs just taking out entire squads of zombies with one hit you know zip bang it's you know all of it is gone i'm just, just chasing chasing away away entire armies with uh artifacts yeah. and such like like this is very quickly it, turning into, it, into an epic, I must say. <laughs> Here's the thing, like, all the necromancers have to do is, like, make it more trouble than it's worth. Like, sure, if the whole world unites against them, 
then they're going to be crushed. But why would the whole world unite against them if they're not really a problem? They're just getting gold for for, for like corpses. And I, mean, I mean, it's not that they're not a problem. They're an opportunity. And it's like, is um, if they're if they're just sitting on a gold mine, then there's a lot of let's say value in in that gold. So right. it's like everyone is going to be interested in that. And that is that is if it's a war for natural resource. I mean, in mine, it, it's it's like you've got two these two massive countries going up against the necromancer one, who teams up with another one. The reason why they're doing it is because, like, you know, one of them's got like a really valuable artifact. It's like it's like a magic. It's like a magical thing. It's just a magical uh, plot device, Ujima Fluffy. But it's still incredibly important to go for all that effort. So, I mean, depending on the setting, it could be natural resources, but what if it's something else? What if it's like uh, an ancient tome from a bygone age that allows for this to happen, or it could be this, or it could be this? It's like, oh no, the Necromancer boys have got a, a fucking dragon that they can raise into an undead. We can't allow that. Yeah, like, sure. Okay, like, I see the point. If the entire world unites yeah. against them, then they're in trouble, but I, I just don't think you can necessarily unite the whole world like that like you know i i that is also like debatable whether you would need an entire world or, I was gonna say, or not, even then, a number of, of mages uh or just not a number of mages who can just like counter the undead tactics perfectly like like you would have you would have uh, priests who can conjure light that can dispel illusion or chase ghosts away, or harm them easily, etc., etc. And it's like suddenly, all of that is is you know all all of our points about um, this stuff being way more powerful are moot because they have you know more powerful magic that can counter what we do. What well, I was um, the fuck was I going? What I was going to say is even if like the whole world it it doesn't the whole world doesn't need to rally against just one. Place. It could it could very easily be that they each have different reasons for it. Like they each have their own objectives, and they could have a very unsteady, shaky alliance or relationship yeah, in yeah, getting those objectives. Yeah. It's like you could very easily have it where they betray each other later on. So uh, here's the thing, they... and I think it nullifies the entire point. Like if any single nation of any kind is ganged up on by the entire world, the chances of it losing are very high. So like, why mm. is that a consideration? That's true, That's true. but but like. Okay, you're assuming that um, there is anyone in in your world who doesn't hate necromancers. I mean, or, maybe... or like there's any like population who doesn't hate necromancers. I'm sure they hate the demonologists more. They're they're like doing all kinds of shit. And what about like the Cthulhu summoners and shit? Is 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 there a, a necro like demonologist society? That would they're... be an entire different topic, honestly. They could. Be. Uh, they're, they're also like. Rejoice! The big titty goth girl friend is here! Rejoice in big demon mommy milkers! I was trying to think. There are, like, some, like, other, like, minor societies who are less okay with it, although they don't really, like, really in power. Like, the, um, like, tribes and their shamans, they are at times being able to show, like, having their own kind of, uh, type of necromancy at certain times. Maybe even using, like, the bones of the ancestors to help them kind of, like, uh, help them fight in certain situations. But at the same time, they're also like only like like small tribes and villages. They're not gonna be able to like be like you know help you with total kingdom domination. There's also the fact of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Like do you you know that China and Pakistan are like buddies, right? It's because they're against India. So like maybe I, these two nations yeah. decide they 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 hate these necromancers for some reason. They they really want that gold. Well, then like the enemies of those countries decide. Oh, okay. While they're busy with them, we may as well get back at our arch rival, the fucking square hat wizards that have been pissing us off for two centuries. We're gonna fuck them I, up. I definitely does do think this will basically going over into like a whole like a uh, necromancer like uh, just global warfare, which would definitely be like it, at this point it probably another podcast because it's honestly a lot of ways for it to go. Because, like, that's also, like, that is another idea of it's, like, if everyone is going towards this one country, one other, another country somewhere else could also just try to see this as, like, advantage. It's, like, okay, they're having to send all their resources against the necromancers because necromancers are goddamn resilient. So, I can probably just sneak. Oh, hey, what's this? Is this a cartload yeah. full of C4? Hmm. It could be, it could be, like, like, I don't think they would need... Um, if they had magic, if they didn't have magic, then you suddenly need the whole world to ban. But like, 
absolutely the whole world will band against something that is so powerful that it poses an explicit threat. Absolutely. Uh, you mean you mean like they, every they second would band against Nazi Germany, and they would against like necromancer society that's like spreading it and, and building itself up. That's not. They so absolutely good. would. I was gonna say, like, 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 from, like, more or less every second of our expansion. It's like, oh no, the Burning Legion's here. We must team up against them. Oh no, the fucking so and so is here. We've got to team up against them and put aside our differences. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, 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 it has happened already, and 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 to a larger degree than the Vietnam situation. Mm. Like, like, it has happened, and it has, let's say, worked. And this isn't counting people fucking up. I mean, take World War Two with Italy, for example. It's like, hey, hey, Nazis, I'm going to join you guys. Okay, 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 nice, 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 nice course, it's Nazis. Okay, says Italy. I'm going to go attack Africa. Wait, what? <laughs> um, yeah, but, but um, I think that the best way for a necromantic society to function would be to, like, kind of work like an infestation. It's like, set mm. itself up where it's not seen and then do its thing for uh, years and years. And then when you when somebody discovers them, it's already too late. They're already too self-sustainable. What, uh, something I wanted to say is one, um, geography and how necromancers will, can use or get fucked by this. And mm. two, um, necromancers being really good for, uh, for a conflict of attrition in this regard because if you've got a conflict that can, that's going on for an extended period of time, you're not going to be struggling. There's going to be bodies in abundance. I got a couple of points I can kick off with. So, like, first mm. of all, necromancers, especially if, like, we're talking with liches, like, no living ones, they can very easily set up in somewhere completely inhospitable. Like, let's say a craggy mountain, maybe an extreme case, like a desert or some kind of place like that and like no one will want to take their land because it's worthless the only reason they invade is because they they take you know some kind of objection to the necromancer's existence which you can make arguments for but like um uh, go on no no you could, you could, you could uh i have like a idea that's about in my head okay let's hear it um you can also kind of like do for like the um and the essential of if like if it's a lich, you can also do like the necromantic streams and also probably done with a normal uh necromantic society who are still alive. But this one is probably more to the extremes. I feel like a necromantic society can also like just plop himself in like any like wilderness area deep in like kind of forest as mm -hmm. long as there's no one like really like a big trend or anything like that overseeing it. They can probably just kind of do like a symbiotic relationship of taking over the natural predators and basically like doing their own like bit of uh, sense of slaughter. But if you're a lich. There's also one thing you can do, which is probably like one of the most deadliest things, which is probably hide in like a, a cave deep uh, hidden in the forest or anything like that. Because you know remember how like, how, like kind of COVID started? It's pretty much because like like there's a uh, there's a, like a shit ton of caves, uh, a shit ton of uh, bats sitting in this one cave for uh, for like uh, hundreds of years and basically making that place like more and more festered and so many fucking diseases that nobody can really uh, like nothing alive can really just handle it pretty easily. <laughs> Really, if, really good. If, 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 if lich, going, yeah, yeah. If, if it's like if a lich just finds like one of like the most infested caves deep within the wilderness, not only is that going to be really fucking hard to get to because like this could cause like deforestation along the way or something like that. Because they're also probably have like you know wild, wild animals as undead servants, so they're gonna have, they'll have like the field advantage with that. Plus, you're gonna have a hard time just entering their own fucking home because you know so many deadly diseases that you can't even really deal with. Yeah. Hmm. The problem with this, though, is if a disease is deadly, how deadly is it? Because you do you do have diseases that are so deadly that they kill themselves. As in, they will kill all of the hosts before they can trans uh, they can transmit it onto other hosts. Yeah, maybe like a curse is better. Kind of like medium. Yeah. Hmm. Or what if or what if it was something along the lines of um, something that's not fatal at all, spreads throughout enemy lines, and then you say activate something and boom everyone's now suddenly got super aids <laughs> yeah uh, sorry guys to sort of cut in here but there's so much shit in this document we haven't touched yeah let's uh do we want to talk about like the artwork and shit because that seems interesting 
I'm doing some fucking cool French catacombs. <laughs> Uh, well, we've done morality, I guess, a bit, haven't we? Yeah. Should we move we on to... touched up on, on roles in, of, of, in society, I think um, we can uh, try to figure out how we could have, like, um, oversight, right? So... Mm -hmm. I have had different ideas with regards to who could, like, what could the structure of the society be, right? So yeah. that depends on how fast can a single necromancer, like, deal with the tasks of being a necromancer. So could a single necromancer, like, raise an entire horde of undead easily? In which case you would just need a single necromancer. If there's a lot of, like, maintenance for the magic spells themselves, then you would need a necromancer and then, like, adepts, be like, below them, right? Yeah. But if you have um, just, like, okay, you, you just raise the dead and then you just... that They're just gonna stay. That they're, they're completely fine. Then you could have something like individuals trained in commanding the dead... But knowing nothing about the magic, they would just be specialists in their own field. So you have a specialist that is like a um, mining specialist, and he yeah. commands the undead for a mine, right? That's a fantastic point, yeah. I, I was also thinking about that. Um, I think it's totally possible that normal people that aren't quite necromancers be given control over undead in such a society yeah, yeah. this would, would this familiarize them with with them and undead and make them more sort of it would. content with them i think so mm. it's, especially if it's saving lives like you don't have to send your, your your brothers and sons into the mines anymore like you've got these skeletons to do it now and they're no longer at risk of cave-ins and Gas leaks. How would this interact with human incompetence and stupidity? Because you will have people that will fuck up, and you will have people that will say, you've got somebody that disrespects the dead, and... You know what I just thought of? It's like, two guys getting fucking angry and then using their undead armies to, like, beat the shit out of each other. You know, like, fuck you, man. It took you years! Ah, fuck the, you, the man! Necromancer would be able to like oversee them but the necromancer would also have the supreme command over the undead so mm -hmm. like if something bad happens then a necromancer and, and and the undead would be like taught that like okay at first level you listen to your supervisor but at at the, the you know second level the supervisor of the supervisor so like a necromantic adept can override anything a specialist can say then a necromancer can override anything a a single you know single adept can say so it's like you have a chain of command and the very bottom listens directly to the very top if need be yeah that makes sense what's good what so you can't the... really have you can't really have uh let's say a good rebellion because suddenly you have a direct link between the very bottom and the very top so there's basically no equivalent of doing a burnout using your boss's car. You can't do that with necromancy. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, well, if if you if you and and it would be it could work in like a feudal way, but like suddenly you don't have feudal wars because if if a necromancer sees that two of his like supervisors or adepts are fighting each other, and he's like, okay, stepping in, and all of you are, all of you, are, let's say, join the army now. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and he, you have forfeited your living for somebody else there. <laughs> yeah. Um when it comes to the undead in society, if they're taken from a certain demographic or a certain class or a certain populace or sub level, um how would the education interact with this? Because would a would somebody who can't read living be able to read commands dead? That depends on the spell and like the level of uh, capacity that the uh, spell progs programs them with. 
Mm. Oh, Christ. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine like, a bunch of stupid stories where necromancers just fuck up, not because... Like, you could have a necromancer who's the most meticulous OCD person possible who then fucks up because the undeads that he's got can't fucking read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's undead, how, how do you... How do you go about doing this? Like, do you teach it how to read? Well, hang on. Why does the undead need to read? Um, uh, that's actually a really good point. <laughs> like, it... I don't think the undead could, there would be like borderline uh, menial workers. They wouldn't need to be able to read anything. You would mm. just have like human supervisors doing all of the thinking for them. In yeah. A way. Yes, like you can tell them go mine that or like pump these bellows yeah, for me while yeah. I hammer this, but. Or you could have, like, um, you know how, how they're, like, let's say, uh, programmers, right? So you could have, like, necromancers who are specifically programmers, mm -hmm. and they would basically, uh, in contact with the, uh, with the specialists in the field, they would be like, okay, what does the undead need to do? How, how would he need to be modified, his program, in order to, to be more easily controllable so like the supervisor just says like like pick up and the the, the undead just picks up whatever is on the ground in front of them etc etc right so it's like yeah it, it, it's more for the for the like function rather than uh than anything else and 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 then the the wizard can obviously like override anything that they say because he has some kind of a backdoor right and uh, i'm just i'm kind of just spell. picturing I'm just picturing this. It's like, oh, oh, you're a nice necromancer. So what, what, what do you use to code your dead? Python or C plus <laughs> plus? Yeah. Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus. Oh, oh, oh what's that? It's, it's the necromancer alternative. Okay, okay. It's made with Java. Oh <laughs> fuck. Fucking. <laughs> 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 well, it's a dead program, exactly. You know, I always thought of magic as being like programming, like you write the shit on a scroll, like magical instructions to do crap. It's like pretty similar. I mean, that yeah. depends on the magic, but magic in most, like let's say D and D like settings, is kind of like that in a way. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, you're you're writing things on a scroll and in a magical language, and it happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about undead and government? Because we've got that as a point. It seems interesting. Um, under the government. So the positives of this, okay. So say for example, you've got a government and it's a good government. You've got and you've got good people in that in these roles. Now, what you can do is you can have uh, menial undead performing menial tasks. You know, make things a lot more casual. Uh, but you can also have like the souls and spirits of proper good um, government officials uh, who know what they're doing, working in this government. The negatives of this, though, is, and you will see this quite a bit with a, with having undead in like this kind of society, is societies change and grow. When you have something that's alive, it will change and grow. Yeah, it will alter. It will. It's it's it, the very nature exactly. of life to change and, and, and to do that. Um, having an undead goes against that a bit because you've got something that could be five hundred years old, but it's still it'll be a product of its time. So if, let's say, for example, that and uh, you've got a government official who's in, in, who's incredibly brilliant with legislation and laws and shit, who is still working there. But around this time, let's say orcs were frowned upon or were enslaved, or let's say the elves were heavily prejudiced against, and then 500 years after his death and then his reanimation or his soul doing stuff, um, it could be that say elves and humans are allowed to do whatever they want or orcs treat yeah, as equal yeah, members of society yeah. so this person could hold that back because mm -hmm. of the prejudices of that time this person could very easily not be able to change and grow because they're dead and it would end up with a significantly less efficient uh e efficiently run society because it yeah, can't yeah. adjust itself to the changing times because the undead cannot adjust themselves yeah. easily as well and and something that you can see in real life is when it comes to say sort of a lot of rights and shit um you will kind of see that old people have quite a few benefits compared to younger people because older people 
typically make all the fucking rules and laws. So a good a good possible way of going about this issue is to limit the freedoms and liberties of like of undead in power, which would then mean that they get pissed off and would want to go against that. And if they relied on you, you say, how would you how would you limit the power of the people in power? Like, how does yeah, that even yeah. work? There's a violent overthrow. How, how do you, how do you, like, because, like, the thing is that they literally, like, a necromancer would literally have all of the power. Like, all of the society is literally standing on the necromancers, mm. right? So, because, like, like that, they can override any undead. They can override any ghosts that they raised, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the whole um, point of the society is going. The whole, let's say, um, pyramid of the society is going to be who within the circle of necromancers has the most power and is mm. the smartest. And that yeah. would be the only like turnaround of the um, of the people in power. Is like the 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 only changes would be amongst the necromancers themselves. Who can like take over the, the the corpses? An issue I see with that as well, like uh, if the smartest necromancer is in charge, is it going to be the case where everybody thinks a necromancer is smart, so they elect this one person because they think he's clever? Is it the case where he's going to be a pseudo intellectual where he says like big words and thinks himself to be clever when he actually isn't and and has no fucking clue what he's doing? Um, <clears throat> looking at RPM. Um, I, mean, I mean, you 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 can basically have a situation where um how should i say it it's not it wouldn't be a necromancy right sorry uh, it wouldn't be a democracy right because mm. it's like you have just a council of people who are in power and they do not need to care about anything below them because nothing below them can actually do anything to them the only yeah. people that can like do anything to each other are the necromancers themselves because they can take over the the, the undead etc so like Probably the one with the highest, let's say, potency for magical, you know, taking over undead and has, you know, the, the highest raw power uh, and isn't, you know, stupid enough to get, like, subterfuge assassinated uh, would be the one in charge, most likely. Yeah, and I agree Probably would be that. a very happy society that way, but... One way that it could maybe work, too, is if you had, like... Um different counties and each necromancer was like the boss of that county but then i can see them like going to war to like expand their own territory and shit yeah, yeah. they'd quickly just destroy themselves um one thing i wanted to be, ask what you're talking about is like greece like polis but yeah that would exactly. work very yeah. well um is there any way that like i i kind of see it as like um a single necromancer dictator is probably the best kind of society like yeah, the most like a lich king yeah yeah but is there a way that you could have um like a council of necromancers without it immediately devolving into like um sort of feudal warfare and shit you've raised too many corpses give corpses no you can't i'm gonna go to war with you <laughs> yeah i think um some kind of like weird mage council could be interesting. Um, oh god! All I'm all I'm thinking of now is the lich is. I'm a, not sure if it will work. And all I'm thinking now is like a, ma a necromancer king who like rules over a place, but so everything is in his name. Everything is raised because of him. Then he dies. There's a power vacuum, and necromancers all over the place are, sc are scrabbling to try and fill the fill the void. Yep, that's it. Well, he can just anoint someone before he dies. Uh, but the only big issue is that he would probably be afraid about that someone stepping forward before he dies naturally. Right. Uh, by the way, guys. So it's like... I want somebody to replace me when I die. Why wait? <laughs> what kind of necromancer that's powerful like that does not become a lich or something? That is a very good point. Uh... I mean, I mean, he becomes a lich, but then what if you know some kind of hero steps forward and kills him? Mm. Like, mm. like, how how much are you going to bet on no, you know, chosen one, quote unquote, stepping forward one day and 
like toppling all of this. That would actually be really fucking hilarious because all like oh imagine imagine if you've got like a like two countries that are just absolutely at each other's. So the non necromancer one is like you know what fuck it let's do some propaganda we we'll get some random twat in a barn stable say that he's the chosen one and we'll just keep launching these fuckers at the lich king until he's dead <laughs> job done. I'm trying to think with the lich king and like like the uh, power vacuum is like anything like that um. Cause, like considering the fact that like you know he's like the Lich King master of necromancy, I feel like he can basically even like you know, like does have a second uh, stage of undeath where he can just make himself a ghost or like um even just like has like uh, has a spirit linger for a bit. So like the moment he dies, he can just say, "By the way, this cunt, he's leading y'all." Christ! Imagine um, that! Imagine that fucking yeah. chosen one just like plunging his sword into the, into the Lich King. It's like, why? Why would you do this? Because you're evil. Evil. I'm in a meritocracy. You cunt. This is a utopia. Everyone's happy. What? <laughs> we've, we've got the best of communism and socialism here. You twat. Look outside. Everyone's fucking celebrating. <laughs> oh god! Evil I'm outside. There. There's, there's like there's like skeletons and top hats and yeah, and like liches in in, in rich dresses. Yeah, and you got and you got people like, having casual conversation with 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 them and whatnot. It's like, and you can and you can see like I will destroy going... you, you, you filthy lich king. I will destroy this whole, uh, this whole evil, uh, pl- your whole evil plan. And he's, and it, he, he's like, it's literally fucking socialism. It, you made it work. <laughs> you, 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 why? You evil lich. I will put an end to your evil empire. Evil? I mean, it's a bit fucking racist of you, isn't it, you twat? What? Just because I'm not dead doesn't mean I'm fucking evil. Evil, eh? That's sort of a feminist. Of perspective, isn't it? <laughs> like, uh, uh, after, after 5,000 years, we finally made socialism work! Why <laughs> did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> we found oh. the meaning of communism, communism and actually not a pipe dream. What? spent thousands of years trying to figure out a way in which socialism could work and only after producing this necromantic society we actually managed to do this and you're like well it's evil so we gotta purge it no why i i represent goods and justice and order and i'm now going to fucking but mate i'm a fucking feminist i was gonna have civil rights and shit you put an end to that now all right guys i got a question for you yeah Design your own I... necromancy society. How would it work? Like, ooh, just a quick one. Like, don't have to go too. Are we going off of normal D and D basics? Whatever. You I'm want. wanting. I'm wanting to kind of like talk about mine a bit, but I want. No, no, no. Let's 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 do a new one. Let's let's do. Ooh, let me think. Let me think. Um, who wants to go first? I can. I if can you go want. first. All right. Um. Okay. So, I thought up of uh. A story a while ago about the Lost Expedition, which had a necromancer be its basically its leader, and um, she dispatched the the Inquisitor that was sent with them, and essentially took over uh, running the society. So the way it was run is it was on the fringes of the world, so it didn't really have much of an of a contact with the rest of the world per se. Uh, so it was like deep in the wilds and the way it was run is that uh, the necromancer essentially has uh, a bunch of well one or two addicts because it was just like a single colony per se a single city uh, and the undead are basically used specifically for martial purposes as well as for uh, for tilting the the, the soil etc and people uh, mostly take up slightly like higher um, education jobs and essentially what they did to supply the corpses was I mean of course one they used magic to stop them from decomposing and uh, even as they got destroyed they essentially um, hunted for or or just like uh, repelled the assaults of wild beasts and other such things on their colony and they use the parts of the wild beasts to produce uh, undead through which they would like defend their colony and essentially support themselves 
so it was it was kind of like it was kind of like um functioning based on on uh one necromancer then you know adepts and then specialists who were just regular people and essentially just you know for example there was like night watch which uh was like literally regular human captain who was taught how to give orders to the undead and they basically like like there was one like human and a bunch of undead manning the walls at night and during the day there was slightly more humans and you know uh slightly less undead because you know humans need to sleep and such nice so it was like like kind of like a like a small society and 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 people who who lived there mostly took up like high sort of education jobs and those that um those that couldn't those that didn't have let's say the education they the, basically the efforts were put to educate them and to give them like skills to do things like being a scribe etc etc et it wasn't like like a long term sustainable powerful society it was just like a colony that was predicated on the notion of uh, some something like personal freedom right where where you would need to let's say do the job you were born into you know so like pe people based on on their merits and their skill could be like could do things that um would be useful in that society but but um yeah it was it was it was less a society and more like a small colony like a small refuge where a lot of things were permitted sounds awesome who wants to go next all right um i guess i guess i'll go okay okay so uh making a new one from scratch all right fuck it so this will be an empire right you'll have an emperor at the top the emperor um could have started a dynasty that would be going on for potentially thousands of years before his death um it I say before his death. It could be it could be that before his death he wanted to become a lich and rule forever. It could be that he was terrified of dying and so he went to, he went for that, but he would make sure that he'd have a lot of ears. So the way in which the society would work is that he would be in charge of a majority of the important undead. So he would be like its uh, unending ruler, more or less. His children would start their own dynasties in the, in different parts of the world and start their own shit. Um and uh, the way it could work could be that criminals would be very uh, criminals that would be given a death sentence or criminals that would be deserving of high punishment would be turned into undead the issue with this though is of course how do you make sure you've got enough criminals to meet demands so there could be quite a bit of uh, excessive laws in place like not dystopian but more kind of um ridiculous in, in some areas like you know how you've got stupid laws in real life that are not enforced now imagine that except they are enforced so uh, kind of like that no fucking um, walking death <laughs> <laughs> you, what's what's this you, you're wearing two hats death <laughs> um it could be so each of these dynasties would be sort of interconnected similar to how europe would be war would be impractical but not impossible so um and of course, with how the empire would, help with how empires would be, spread of information would have to be very heavily controlled and would have to flow very excessively. There would have to be roads everywhere. There would have to be tons of there would have to be tons of stuff to make sure that um, living is fine and shit is good. This, however, as time goes on, can very easily change and become eroded. The dynasties from this um, emperor could easily alter as time goes on and become more independent or once independence which could start its own problems and conflicts and so on and so forth um you could have all of that now the way in which this could be maintained as in like the empire could be maintained is it could uh, take the corpse it could take the corpses or make the corpses or the people or take the people um do what other empires do and have slavery Let's say, for example, you've got an island full of people. Yep, that's prime target. Let's go over there and, and get some of them. Oh, what's this? You've got some people down south that, that are doing pagan shit. Not on my watch, fucko. So on and so forth. <laughs> nice. um, 
it could it could be that when it comes to the whole thing of like the culture and all of that, it would be very dev oriented and very dev focused. It could be sort of very kind of like, uh, oh yeah, no, he's dead. Yeah. Anyway, how are you? As in, it's very kind of casual. Hmm. So there would be um, there would be things in place to make this empire chilled in some areas. As in, people would be growing up with all of this around them and it would become completely normal to them. People wouldn't fear death. People would instead, if anything, just either embrace it or would be very nonchalant about it. Like, yeah, it would, it's sad that this person's dead, but nah, it's fine, it could be worse. Um, when it comes to the art and the architecture, the architecture could be very much a mix of Egyptian and, say, Roman. Um, actually, no, 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 no. A mix of Egyptian and Byzantine. I fucking love Byzantine. <laughs> um, uh, the art would uh, have very heavy influence on, say, you could have either dead uh, emperors as gods, or it could even be that you have different aspects of death which are made and personified into gods. Like, you could have one for bone, one for blood, one for flesh, one for soul, so on and so forth. Or it could even be that they've got a pantheon of gods all derived from one god which itself died, and its essences were split. So you'll have, diff like, different parts of these which, represents di which represent different parts of life and death and so on and so forth. That is if they do do that, because it could, it could very easily change. It could be that the gods that they have would be more sort of... The made solely for what is required so you'd have like a like a fertility god you'd have like um, a god of industry so on and so forth um when it comes to geography i don't know enough about geography to actually fucking talk a lot about this but what i was going to say is that they would probably um the if other magic exists then what they could do is they could create their own undead from other stuff as in they could magically create, or like they could get demons or magically created monsters and whatnot and just fucking raise them for, spe uh, for specific purposes. They could even have it where they'll have projects with thousands and thousands of undead, undead sent to, say, excavate mountains or carve paths through the landscape or whatnot to connect empires and different parts of the world. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot that can work, but the biggest issue of this would be the human element, of course. So humans would be in charge of it, and you've got the human element. So therefore, if if somebody fucks up, it would have like if somebody fucks up and it involves undead, it would could possibly have disastrous consequences. Yeah. But because of the size of the empire, this can easily be limited, or it cannot be limited. It depends on who's doing it and where they are. So, all right. Um, I think that's it. I was going to say that to keep things interesting, it could even be that the undead emperor goes mentally insane after like 5,000 years, so then he gets put down by one of his great, 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 great grandchildren or some shit, who then takes up the position and replaces him, But which then goes into, into the political arguments of, because he's gone insane, do we even need an emperor in the first place? Everything's pretty chill right now, and then everything starts dissol uh, dissolving. Yeah. Alright, I'll, um, I'll do mine, and then Negvir can do his... So, um, my yeah. idea is my necromancer society would be like a very small one, basically a family unit. So there's no trust issues. Like, you know, you can trust your sister, hopefully not to like slaughter you. Sweet home. <laughs> oh, not to slaughter. Okay. Then. I know I could trust my sister not to slaughter me. So it'd be like a, <laughs> a small family unit of like, I don't know, five or six people. They go away and they live in like the, 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 the mountains, like very mountainous where goats liked to live and would basically be like goat herders except we'd also like reanimate the dead goats so to make like awesome satyr skeletons and shit so basically you'd be you'd have these necromancers living in mountainous caves they'd have like armies of goat men things and like goats for beasts of burden and shit very occasionally we might trade with like a nearby village like maybe sell excess goat meat being very careful not to expose ourselves as necromancers we'd probably like just work in our tunnels like digging deeper into the earth maybe we find some dwarves we can like wage war with and grow our numbers that way pretty simple like not a whole lot to it but yeah that's what i'd do it'd be like a primarily animal based society and it would be a very sm small duration thing. Like it wouldn't be like um, 
centuries of whatever it'd be within the lifetimes of these necromancers, assuming they couldn't attain lichdom or whatever the fuck. I think what you described to us was a very roundabout way of a mafia committing underground warfare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, I have no fucking clue because <laughs> you know me. I pretty much play, I pretty much play as the happy-go-lucky necromancer. I have no fucking plans for like any like actual society. At most, I would basically like see myself or like a uh, like uh in the way how it's kind of see something going is. Basically, like, uh, just, like, one of my kind of characters just kind of going around and seeing, like, uh, as, like, you know, like, a high-ruling or, like, a very powerful fucking necromancer doing his own thing, probably with undeath as well. And he probably just sees, like, this little kingdom has been, like, completely distraught and almost destroyed very few of his populace left. So it'd probably go and probably, like, form a contract with, like, the, their current king of, I'm gonna protect you. And when everything's finished and, and you're completely rebuilt, I'm just gonna go fuck off, all right? And so I'd probably just like uh, probably build my own walls around their fucking kingdom. And basically, just keeping uh, maintenance of the walls throughout all the, all the years. I don't care how many fucking generations it'll take, as long as it happens eventually. Then when they actually rebuild their kingdom, then I'd probably just fuck off. Like I don't have too many plans for anything <laughs> like that. All right, sounds interesting. Anyway, so I was planning on ending it here. Does anyone have any final thing they want to say? Um, I wanted to say something about yours and your goat family. Like, sure, go for it. I just, I just all I could fucking think of is like, oh yeah, a family, and and the raised goats and raised goats and war with dwarves. <laughs> and I just, I just listened to it and I just think to myself. The fuck? Why does this actually sound viable? <laughs> it's completely viable. That's why it's good. <laughs> um, I mean, again, it's literally a roundabout mafia, a uh, mafia underground warfare. Yeah. Like, imagine, imagine if you had that, but with like the the fucking British monarchy. So, and instead of goats, it was swans because the queen has a thing for swans and corgis. So it's like it to be swans and corgis. <laughs> oh dear! World War Three is kicked off. Charles, get the corgis. We're going out hunting. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, I think the smaller the better for a necromancer society. Mm. And I guess that's why we usually see them only as like cults instead of like actual full blown societies. Yeah, except in like what? Forgotten Realms and shit. Like you've got the the society of Thay or whatever with the you know the Zolkiers and all that shit. Um, would it also be the case wherein if it's a smaller group instead of a society, it's also less undead, so therefore it's easier to actually fight against? Yeah, but also a whole lot less reason to go to war with them. Like, what do you want to fight me for? You want my fucking mountain? My fucking goats? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Oh, my fucking mountain goats? God damn, what do you want from me else next? Like, bro, I only got the fucking grass and the hills. What? Your ass is grass, and I've got the goats. Yeah, like the whole. The, well, the main thing would be like stealth, like not being seen. Yeah, it's like I think a lot about necromancy, ne necromantic society is like how well can you hide from the wide world, you know? Yeah. And like to the outside, hopefully we'd just be seen as like weird goat herding people. Little do they know that we've got armies of satire things. That's so funny. That is so funny. <laughs> Alright, guys. Uh, just... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Anything else? Or... Yeah. Okay. Um I mean on the topic of satire, all I, all I can think of is a necromancer right now, just fucking uh just getting a, like a dead baby and just drop kicking it as like a <laughs> bomb. It's yeah. like there's a, there's a film there's a film where that happens, like not to that not to that extent. It's you got Cockneys versus zombies. And this guy is a pram, and this guy like picks up a, the baby from it, but it's it's infected, it's undead, so he just drop kicks it into a into a billboard that's advocating against uh, like family abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks for watching, and thank you guys for participating. Thank you very much for having us. Still having us, Chip. I need more necro titty. <laughs> Don't we all?
Did you see the lich oh, I posted? Yeah. Donde? Where? Pause? Where? If you go to the not safe for um, work channel and you scroll oh, up, I, no. I posted an oblivion female lich. It's way up there, you'll find it. Alright, stop and read.